go. Team of the go. week time where every week I go position by position. And this will be the last one before uh, team of the month. The mm. August team of the month will be Monday's episode. I can't believe we're up. heading into the last regular Crazy. like month of the regular season. Yeah. So we got team of the month position by position, picking the best player from every single spot on the field from the week that was in Major League Baseball. And we'll start at the catcher position with the big dumper, yeah. Cal Raleigh. What a week the guy had hit 450, three homers, nine RBIs, an OPS of 1500. By the way, fun fact, last season, Cal Raleigh, who didn't even play all season long, uh, led all catchers and homers. Guess who leads all Major League Baseball catchers and homers this year as of right now? Cal Raleigh. Yes. Big dumper. He's my catcher. All right, moving up to first base, Bryce Harper. Look at Br first time Bryce Harper has ever been on team of the week at first base yep. because, well, he hasn't ever played first base until he a few weeks ago when he came back. And good Lord, 478, three homers, nine RBIs, and a 1556 OPS for first baseman yeah. Bryce Harper. What a week for him. And, uh, yeah, it appears. Remember, Bryce was out for a long time and did not take a rehab stint. No. Just immediately started hitting major league pitching. And, oh, what do you know? You look up now and – how long has he been back? I don't know about the length of spring training at bats that he would have gotten. Yeah. So, and now of he's course heating he's heating up. Yeah. So he's my first base. Just in the nick of time for the Phillies. Yes. All right. Let's move to second base. Josh Rojas. Josh Rojas, first timer on mm -hmm. here. Josh Rojas, great week. 444, two homers, six RBIs, and a 1.168 OPS for the Seattle Mariners, who we all know are playing great baseball these days, but Josh Rojas, uh, not a name that, not a household name. Uh -uh. And uh, that he's been a big part, especially in the last week of that Mariners offense. So good for him. First timer on here. He's my second baseman. All right, moving to third base, Alex Bregman. Yeah, Alex Bregman, uh, third baseman. This week, 429, one homer, seven RBIs, and a 1.293 OPS. Yeah, Breggy's back. Breggy bombs. Breggy's back. <laughs> Breggy, any more bees? Breggy, baseballs. Breggy, <laughs> just I, stop. I'm I just know. gonna cut you Breggy's, off. Gonna, Bregman's my third base. We're gonna move to to shortstop. Last week's guest, Gunnar Henderson. That's right. You come on flipping bats, and you become. Uh, you come on the you're on team of the week. That's just how that works out. 385 average, two homers, six RBIs, a 1.178 OPS, and one guest appearance on Flippin' Bats Pod. And that there, wow, we got another look at that. It's, it's on the lower third. It's that, a stat. Look, it is. It's a stat. It is a factual stat. Who came on Flippin' Bats last week? One person, and he ended up on team of the week. Coincidence? No. <laughs> if you've listened to this podcast for more than a, a few weeks, then I, I I feel I feel like a lot of people say this. There really is something crazy about the pod luck. Like it's not yeah. just it it really is. Like at one point last year we had statistics on it. Like when you come on the pod, the odds go from, I don't know, like plus two hundred for you to hit a home run that night to like minus a million. You are hitting a home run that night minus if you come on the pod. And we saw Gunner hit a, a couple on the week and he just had yeah, he had a really good week. So full disclosure, I got to third base for team of the week. I always go like, you know, catcher yeah, yeah. first, second, third, short. I got to third and was like, oh, my God. Gunnar Henderson and Alex Bregman had a very similar week. And I'm friends with Bregman. Yeah. And Gunnar came on the pod this week. And I was like, I am in a state of confusion. I don't know what to do. And then I looked and was like, oh, Gunner's playing short tonight. He's my shortstop on team of the week. And this alleviates <laughs> all of my problems. <laughs> Alex Bregman at third. Okay. Gunner Henderson Thank at short. Thank you for clarifying that. Yes. All right. Well, let's head to the outfield. Now, remember, this is just three outfielders, not necessarily by position. First up, Adam Duvall. This was a this was quite the week for a lot of outfielders. Yeah. So it was tricky out there. Adam Duvall, 400, four homers. 11 RBIs and a 1.371 OPS on the week. So uh, we saw Duval doing this beginning of the year. Then he got hurt, and uh, it's been kind of 
down, up a little, down for Adam Duvall since, but this this is what we were watching at the beginning of the year. If you all remember, he got hurt really early on, but he was like the best player in baseball for the yeah. first like week or so of the year. So Duvall is back as my first of three outfielders. All right, second up, Kerry Carpenter. Oh, baby. I love me some Kerry Carpenter. Guys, look, great week. Yes, 450. Kerry Carpenter of the Detroit Tigers, by the way. 450 on the week. Three homers, eight RBIs of 1472 OPS. But hear me out. I'm I'm starting to get excited about the Tigers' future, and Kerry Carpenter is a big part of that. Obviously, Riley Green, Spencer Torkelson, uh, that makes me excited. Riley Green's a stud. Tork having a turnaround year. But Kerry Carpenter has announced his presence with authority in this Tigers lineup. He has almost 300 at-bats this year and has an OPS over 900 on the season. That's not a, that's not a fluke. That's not a flash in the pan. That's a statement, right? What are these saying? Flash in the pan is one. Right Look it now. up. Read I've a book. Flash in the pan. You don't read books. No, but don't I know. Tell me to read a I know. Flash in the read. pan. Isn't that never. a statement? No. Maybe it's a southern thing. I've it's definitely a statement. I've never heard that. It basically means like it's no quick. It's no fluke. It's no flash in the pan. I don't know what it means, All man. Right. It's just a statement. Gary Carpenter, my second of three outfielders. Wrapping up the outfield, Mookie Betts. Yeah, Mookie's great for Team of the Week because he's really good, and you can put him in a cornucopia of Anywhere. places. You can put yeah. him wherever you want. Outfield, second base, shortstop, uh -huh. wherever. 619 on Woo! the week. 619 with four <laughs> RBIs and a 1476 OPS. And that return back to Fenway, really cool week for Mookie. Uh, but yeah, 619, pretty impressive. So he is my third of three outfielders. That's Adam Duvall, Kerry Carpenter, Mookie Betts. All right, moving on to designated hitter, Marcel Ozuna. Yeah, Marcel Ozuna has been really having a solid year for the Braves and really, man, I, I watch him a lot lately and he's putting together some of the best at bats. I, I Right now, specifically the last week or so, I, he's putting together the best at bats I've, I've seen from Marcelo Zona. 476 on the week, four home runs, eight RBIs, and an OPS of 1685 on the week. Marcelo Zuna, DH. All right, let's head to your starting pitcher, Charlie Morton. Yeah, Charlie Morton. Great start on the mound. Punched out 11 guys, got the win, seven innings pitch, zero earned runs, and a .091 batting average against. So, Seven innings, 11 punch outs. Wow. Dominance for old Uncle Fire. Charlie. That's what they call him, Uncle Charlie. Oh, okay, cool. I didn't make that up. Uh, did I, you? I actually don't say that, Ben. I didn't make up anything I've said here. I don't know why I just got so. I, I, I'm going to look up Flash in the Pan. I didn't make that up. <laughs> but I didn't. It is make, a thing? Of course it's a thing. I, we, got our, we got an it, audience seeing, out over yeah. here. It's, it means what I said and it means. Am I the only one who hasn't heard it? Is it a Southern thing? I think it's probably no, a Southern thing. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I, it's weird. I don't get it. All right. Well, let's close, let's close out team of the week with a closing pitcher. <laughs> Pete Fairbanks. Yeah. Pete Fairbanks was nasty down there for the Rays. Rays are playing, Rays are playing good baseball for sure. He ended up with uh, two saves on the week, but punched out a lot of guys in those opportunities. Seven strikeouts in three innings pitched with zero earned runs, wow. zero walks and two hits on the week. So Pete Fairbanks of the Tampa Bay Rays rounds out this week's team of the week, which Alex leads to our players of the week you mine first. Who you got is Bryce Harper yeah uh, and I I love to see this and the guy's back uh playing first base so we're getting to see him out there defensively mm -hmm. which he's not he's get he's playing a new position and doing yeah. really well out there but 478 on the week with three home runs and nine RBIs the fills are gonna be the fightings are gonna be a problem in the playoffs they're we're my, talking about the fight my favorite East Coast team <laughs> I love the Phillies. man if if you weren't yet a, a listener when we yep. were at the the World Series last year and in LCS we did a pregame show right across the street at uh, Xfinity Live, Xfinity Live, and we were down there amongst the <laughs> the wild the and drunk fans. Like, and we just—it's a different uh, breed of fan. It, it was in my head for 
for for months after. We just have people just coming up screaming, "We're talking about the fight!" And it was great. <laughs> yeah. Bryce Harper, great player yeah, of the week. It was great. Okay, my player of the week, Mookie Betts. I knew this was coming. Did you? I had a feeling. Oh, that's cool. I mean, how could you not? batting 619 on the week for RBI. He did get his home run on Sunday, which doesn't count towards this week, but he just had such a, it was so cool to see the love, the, the respect that he got going back to Boston for the first time since leaving and coming to LA, but it was just all around. I love moments like that when you get the when you get the the respect, like kind of like how your brother got when he went back, like you said, when he went back to Detroit, yeah. when he went back to Houston, when he was on the Mets for a bit. It's just like it's it's cool to have a player that just is as good as Mookie is or someone like your brother is and just continue to have that respect on any team that they were on. I struggled to watch that series and watch Mo the, the if I if I'm a Red Sox fan. Yeah. You gotta have how, a pit in your stomach. How do yeah. you not the fans' fault, obviously, no. and they were furious and rightfully so. But man, John Henry letting him go. You have a homegrown yeah. Hall of Famer. Yeah. And you just don't re-sign him. Yeah. I, God, every time I, I every time I watched that game, that series this weekend, I just couldn't stop but thinking of like, what is John? What is he? What was he thinking? And I don't know if you saw. But Dodger fans came out in full force yeah, in did, Boston. Yeah. They were taking over the streets. It almost looked like an L.A. home game at one point where they were just literally it was all blue, all blue down all the streets as they were walking into the ballpark. Yeah. And someone said in this video, like, this feels like a Dodgers home game. Like, what's happening here? Mm. Like, it was just it was madness. It was so cool. So, again, for for Mookie having the home team. Boston fans cheer for him. And then obviously all the LA fans that were there, it's, it had to be a very special moment. Yep.